So the population in most established economies uh, is aging, and this will lead to an increase in age-related disorders such as dementia, and the burden could be truly overwhelming. But a better understanding of brain plasticity holds the promise of improving brain health and resilience. Plasticity is the ability of the brain to change and adapt. It makes learning a language, mastering a sport, or recovering from a brain injury possible. And the neurons in our brains and the connections they form with one another orchestrate plasticity. In our heads, we have literally trillions of these connections. And the brain can individually amplify or suppress each of these connections to change the way they process information. So brain plasticity is highly individual and at the same time, obviously, extremely complex. Young brains tend to learn more easily than older brains, but the adult brain, of course, can still learn and change. Here you see what a two-week auditory training program does to brain activation. It changes large areas of brain activation, and this change in activation is proportional to performance and can last a very long time. However, the characteristics of plasticity in the young versus the older brain, they're different. And this is important to preserve the skills that we learned earlier in life. Generally speaking, older brains process sensory information differently, and they need training, punishment, or reward to learn. But at the same time, the precise mechanisms of regulation of brain plasticity are still poorly understood, and a lot more work needs to be done. Something that we seem to know, however, is that the quality of the sensory inputs reaching the brain, auditory, visual information, seems to be an important key to the health of the elderly brain. We and others uh, have found that a degradation in the quality of these sensory inputs can actually lead to the emergence of age-related brain impairments, thinking impairments. For example, noisy auditory inputs due to age-related hearing loss might be one of the most important potentially modifiable risk factor for the development of dementia. So that we can hypothesize then that forms of sensory augmentation, like using hearing aids, for example, might potentially mitigate or even perhaps reverse these age-related impairments. And that would be an interesting alternative to drug-based approaches, which have unfortunately largely failed so far. But interestingly, brain training itself, what you do with your brain, might also reverse or mitigate age-related impairments. Just think of the best musicians in symphony orchestras. They have to practice extremely regularly to keep their skill, to keep their position. And I would argue that most brain processes need some form of maintenance. We've been trying to look for effective, accessible, low-cost methods of training the brain to keep it healthy. But what exercises will be most effective? Is it going to be Sudoku, crossword puzzles, memory games, or even perhaps video games? Rather, it seems that training strategies that involve our senses, again, visual training or audit training, hold the most promise. But what specific exercise is going to work best for what specific individual? This is clearly not known yet. The brain is truly a highly individual organism. What we have to realize is that brain plasticity is supported by hundreds, if not thousands, of molecular processes in the brain. And aging, disease conditions, genetic factors, drugs, all powerfully influence these processes. So it will be important to identify good biomarkers that will help us identify these differences and create effective training strategies. And my lab, in collaboration with my startup company, Inodem Neurosciences, has been looking at non-invasive methods like eye tracking and hearing analysis to find such biomarkers. And the hope is that these biomarkers are going to help us predict how a specific individual is going to respond to specific training intervention. But because there's so much variability between individuals, clearly a one-size-fits-all approach is not going to work. And these individual differences and also what exactly needs to be trained will have to be taken into consideration. Sometimes some kids need a different approach to schooling. So learning to read, to speak, or to sing, and to surmount ordeals is really possible because of this tremendous adaptability of our brains. And education and cognitive remediation, 
brain exercises, help by brain plasticity, could be an important way to improve quality of life. I really sincerely think this is one of the most interesting and promising field of study in neuroscience. Thank you.